Eye beams are a mythical creature. So I wrote eye beams, whoop, scissors, and then your last thing that some people like to say is dirty hooker travel. UTVs have A arms and they're really cool. Alright, so coming to you today, I'm going to explain to you a few things about the, the great best mystery you can have on of eye beams. Eye beams are a mythical creature that are indestructible. Uh, affordable and work like crap. So let me show you why. Rude. These <laughs> right here, my personal eye beams. They kind of look weird, right? Even one more added mystery to the system is the way that mine go to the center. Radius arms. So it's center mount radius arms on this truck. And the reason why you do center mount radius arms is because it creates more triangles. Triangles are strength. Also, it reduces caster change when the radius arms meet in the middle. So there's two different types of I-beams. There are kingpin I-beams, which are what these are. And then there are Dana 44 style C knuckle I-beams that have two ball joints. Those will work. Not as strong as a kingpin. However, I am Captain Destructo and I have snapped kingpin in three pieces. This is what happens when you're a complete asshole to everything that moves. That was once one, it's now three. So on this truck right now, it's actually getting an upgrade to inch and three quarter kingpins that um, Eric Moore makes. And those will take this to a semi truck style kingpin and we know semi trucks can haul hundreds of thousands of pounds or so if it can do that then i may not be able to break them so we're going to try that we'll see what happens morgan clark here so over here darren's talking about upgrading his kingpins but the standard i beam that you would have for a ranger or an f-150 would be a, a ball joint style so you'd have your beam that has a pivot to the frame this is a front view looking at the front of the truck you would have a pivot to your frame you'd have your beam come out, and then you would have holes on the beam where you would have a ball joint that goes through, gets a nut on there, goes through, goes to there, goes to your spindle, holds the wheel of the tire on. So with a kingpin, you have your beam that goes to the pivot, again, it's looking from the front of the truck, and this is only the driver's side. So your beam would be mounted to your frame and then it would go out, and then on the end, you would have a female hole where the kingpin is the male piece and it goes into there. Once that's in, it grabs through here. So this spindle would go over, go over like that, that's your spindle, and then your kingpin would go into there and it would hold these two items on. So Darren's is a one inch diameter currently and he's going to upgrade to inch and three quarter yeah right so 1.75 so that whole kingpin that goes in there is going to be a bigger diameter so it's not going to shear or bend or whatever and when they're even straight they're horrible to get out so anything that's bigger with that situation is definitely going to be better i think too with the when you explain the center mount thing the eye beams are the whoop scissors as you can see, the scissors and the beams represent the similar uh, motion and shape. And this is that frame pivot that we talked about. This is all Eric Moore stuff. These guys are separate from your radius arms. Your radius arms are the other thing that connects back there. And like he said, his are center pivot, but you'd also have for a standard kind of mounting, you'd have them go off the frame. Some people make J arms or J beams, and that's where this unit and that unit, this bolts together here and sometimes it's just one welded unit. And I mean, I don't know the exact benefit with that. I just know that it's harder to take on and off the truck and if one thing bends, then you either gotta cut the other thing off or you can't just replace them. So it's kind of a, a pain in the butt. Back to you, Darren. So biggest benefit, affordability. Anyone can build these. They're available on a lot of junkyard trucks that you could find. The other thing I think with beams that is important is there's less moving parts so that's why that bulletproof aspect kicks in where there's not as much stuff moving on them to where they're gonna fail something's gonna bend you're replacing stuff you know you don't have nearly as many 
pivoting parts so you don't have inner pivots like a lower control arm or an upper control arm. You just have where the spindle is located on the beam or the upright. I guess you'd call it a spindle for a beam. And then you just have your pivots for your radius arms and your pivots for your beams and that's it and there's nothing else. I mean once you get into steering you have a lot of Himes and if you were going to service them then it, you know, there's eight, six or eight if you have swing steer, but that's not actually part of the beam. That's the steering setup. So, so then that gets scary looking. Yeah. A lot of people get scared by swing set setups, but I'll tell you this. I only change out my Himes on my steering every two years. If it's built right, that's how, that's how it works. Right. They don't get worn out nearly as much and the load then is transferred through the chassis. So Iraq is notorious for failing on A-arm trucks. It's one of the biggest weak links on those trucks. So with this, it's cool because it has a steering box. So I'll get up in here and show you. That's the steering box and that's the steering arm. So the arm moves and it just moves this one rod. That's the ram assist that is attached to the same rod. So these two work together. And can I get a Garrick to turn the wheel on this thing? So when he turns the wheel, which is extremely difficult. I can't believe you can do that. We've got practice doing this. <laughs> it turns the entire swing set, which turns the wheels. Swing set steering on beams, is, it's pretty much your beams on a tie rod setup that swing with it so they're almost in line where with your, your beams pivot on the frame and they're almost in line to where it's just swinging with them and then when they droop out or they compress it's the same thing the the tie rods are just following suit with whatever the suspension is doing and the whole reason you do the swing set is so that the tires aren't towed in or towed out when it's functioning through its cycle once again just bulletproof stuff and it's as simple as can be although it kind of looks difficult you get a lot of looks about the swing set steering. Biggest thing to overcome on a factory style beam is the factory style spindles and them going from front steer to rear steer and getting your steering acronym right. Can you explain the steering acronym? Yeah, I should have drawn it. Ackerman is uh, the best way to do it is like overhead. So if if I lay out the front tires and you're, this is, would be a top view where you could see uh, and your center line, if you were to want to go, you know, if this is forward facing, if this is forward facing and you wanted to go right, then your Ackerman would want to be a tighter radius on your inside tire. So this, this guy would want to have a tighter radius and this would want to be a greater radius. So the Ackerman is the thing that you want with either A-arms or beams to be proper. When you take a junkyard beam setup, it's the only thing that's tricky to overcome is going from a rear steer, older style beam end that's much stronger to um, front steer and then overcoming this. But it's simple stuff, again, um, it's been done a hundred times, thousands of different ways, and it's super simple. And still at the end of the day, cheaper and easier to overcome than A-arms, which are very evil, okay? Yep, bad stuff. They're the devil. It's, it's just science. Right. If you have A-arms, you're cheating. No, I'm just kidding. Um, UTVs have A-arms and they're really cool. <laughs> Gay! So, I-beams, I wrote I-beams, whoop, scissors, and then your last thing that some people like to say is dirty hooker travel. And the whole point with that is a camber change through the suspension cycle. So I kind of drew ride height, full compression bump. So since these things pivot from something only in one spot and they go up and down, their, their motion is going to have camber. So the longer your beam is, the less camber you will have when you're at full compression or bump or at droop, bro. If you drew through and this is your pivot for your beam, you'd be here and your ride height would be set. So call it zero. When you go through your compression and you bump the truck out and you hit something or you G out, that's still pivoting on that same pivot. But now your camber is going to swing and it's going to go in like that so it's gonna be positive camber drooping out when you get super sick this thing's still pivoting like that and it's full droop like that so when you land the only issue you're having is you're landing on the peak of your outside tire and you're not landing you know sometimes with a arms you would land either with positive camber or you'd land just with zero camber and it would be a flat landing instead of on the outside now the benefit to having this is also when you when you turn into something, your camber 
helps you in a beam and it still tracks. That's the whole thing is when the truck gets body roll or it's put into a turn, the camber on your on your on your outside, if you're body rolling and you're on the outside, your wheel is getting positive camber. So it's actually providing support to go through the turns and it's tracking better. So hope that blows your mind a little bit. Um, basically, we are the risk takers of off-road uh, set run beams and um, that's why we get sick. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> this